Hey guys, it's Hinda and welcome to Cooking Fantasies. Today's video is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make the perfect short crust pastry. Also known as or called tart shells, tart crust, sugar dough, patsuke as it is called in French. And it's basically this really delicious and crunchy tart base that you can fill with many kinds of creams and fillings. You might already know the fruit tart or the famous lemon tart with meringue. So this is a basic recipe that we're gonna use to make many other recipes here and you can also get creative and fill it with whatever you like. And before we start, if you are new to the channel, we make a lot of delicious things here. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell to get all the notifications. Make sure to watch the video till the end as I will be providing you with all the tips and everything you need to know to make the perfect short grass pastry. And as always, I'm gonna be leaving you down in the description box all the ingredients you're gonna need in both the grams and cups measurements. So let's get started. As you see, I'm using here ground almonds with the peels. They look a little bit darker. If you prefer to go ahead and use blanched almonds, they are the same thing in the recipe. Also here, I'm using a stand mixer. You can perfectly do this with the hands. It's the very same thing. I'm gonna start by mixing the dry ingredients, the flour, icing sugar, powder sugar, my ground almonds that you can substitute with blanched almonds or almond meal, a pinch of salt, I'm just gonna give everything a quick stir to combine and then go ahead and add a butter that you have already cut into small cubes and it should be cold right out of the fridge. This is important. And if you are using a set mixer, use the flat beater like the one I used. It does the job just as good. If you are using a hand mixer, go ahead and use your normal beating handles. Or what you can also do is use just the tips of your fingers. Don't use the whole hand as this might warm the butter and you end up with melted butter and you don't want to have that. So use just the tips of your fingers to work the dry ingredients into the butter. And that's what it should look like. It has a wet sand texture. It is very important not to overwork the dough so as soon as you have this nice wet sand texture go ahead beat the egg in a separate bowl and add it gradually to the first batter while continuously beating. And here again don't use too much power don't overwork it just enough to incorporate the egg into the batter and we're gonna stop. You only want to beat it for 30 seconds or a minute, not more, just enough to incorporate the egg. You don't want to overwork the dough, otherwise it will get elastic and it will change the shape when you bake it. Transfer your short crust pastry dough onto a food safe plastic foil. You want to do this when the dough is still crumbly to avoid again overworking it. So I'm going to transfer my dough into the plastic fold and what I'm going to do is wrapping it while working it into one dough ball. Using this technique allows you to work the dough into one bowl without having to touch it directly. When you touch it directly, the butter tends to melt because of the body temperature and then you're gonna have to work it more so that it comes together. So fold it for about six to eight times, just enough times to stop it from crumbling, then wrap it well and place it in the fridge for at least one hour. Like this is the minimum. It is better to place it for two hours in the fridge or even better, the ideal would be to do it overnight. When you take it out of the fridge, it's going to be solid hard. So this is normal. This is how you will be able to shape it and work with it. And you might want to wait for a couple of minutes to five minutes, depending on the temperature of your kitchen. Then go ahead and start rolling it out between two pieces of parchment paper, silicone uh, mats, whatever you prefer to use. If you need to, you can use some flour. Thank you. 
The thickness should be between two to four centimeters maximum. That's between half and one and a half inches. Just make sure that it's as even as possible so that it bakes evenly. If while rolling you notice that it starts sticking or it's getting harder to work with, place it for a couple of minutes in the fridge and then continue working. The colder it is, the easier it is to work with. Make sure to roll it at least a few centimeters bigger or larger than the circle you are using if you are using a big one for the small ones the same the less you work with the dough the better results you're gonna have the more stable and even it will bake once i've rolled my dough as big as i need it i'm going to place it for the fridge for at least five minutes so that it hardens before i start placing it into the circle as you see in the video the easiest way to do this is to flip it over the circle Peel off the parchment paper, it should come out clean if your dough is cold enough. If not, just place it a couple of minutes in the fridge and then it will peel off immediately. You're not working here with the flour, with anything, you're working with the heat and the cold. This will be your tool. And now for the very important part, this is a very important technique that makes you have a very nice even crust and this is called fonçage or pie sinking. So make sure to cover all the sides, take your time to do that, make sure you get all the corners and have it as even as possible. And if you are using some flour to roll it out, make sure to use the minimum and to keep brushing it off. Once you finish the fonçage or the sinking of the pastry crust, go ahead and trim the excess and place it in the freezer for at least 15 minutes. What we're looking for here is to freeze the dough. And for the rest of the dough, we're gonna put it together without overworking it and place it in the fridge to cool again. And we're going to roll it out again and make the small pies or small tarts. So here we're going to be doing the very same thing. We will roll out the dough between two pieces of parchment paper, silicon mat, or using as little flour as possible if that's what you're using. When it comes to small tarts or tartlets, it is better to cut out the base first, then cut stripes of the dough to make the sides because the sides are usually higher than the bigger circles. And if we use the same fonçage technique or sinking technique we use for the big circle, we're gonna end up with an uneven sides. When placing the dough on the sides, make sure that they glue to the bottom piece of dough. You can even brush it with a little bit of water to make sure that they stick. If they don't stick properly, they're gonna come up when baking and you will end up with an empty space between the sides and the bottom. The best way to do this, use your finger, apply gentle pressure and push the dough, make sure it sticks to the bottom part of the dough and you want the dough again to be very cold to do this easier. Finally, trim the excess of the dough and place them again in the freezer for at least 15 minutes. Again, we want the dough to be frozen. After a minimum of 15 minutes in the freezer, when you take out the short crust pastry, you will notice that it's very hard. It is totally frozen. So one more time, take a sharp knife and trim the sides using moves going outwards. The oven must be preheated to 160 degrees Celsius, that's 320 degrees Fahrenheit, and you want to pierce it all over with a fork before popping it in the oven. If you use this technique, if the dough is totally frozen and you pierce it enough, then you don't need to use any tart weights to keep it in place. And repeat for the smaller tart shells, the very same technique. You might want to adjust the baking time. Just keep an eye until they are nicely golden brown before you remove them from the oven. The baking time will take between 20 to 25 minutes depending on the size of the circle you're using and how thick you rolled out your dough. It is very important that it is already golden brown so it's truly baked. 
Also, I used here almonds with the skin, which makes my pastry dough more brown, more golden, and gives it more texture. If you use blanched almonds, your crust pastry will come out more pale and whiter. Finally, for the last tip, and this is optional, at this point your tart crust is ready to use. You can start filling it with your favorite fruits, creams, nuts, whatever you prefer. But what I like to do is glaze my short crust pastry. This makes it stay crunchy and prevents it from getting soggy. And to prevent that is very easy. So take one egg yolk, one tablespoon of cream, whisk them together and brush your pastry dough over the sides, the bottom. You don't need to do the base, just the sides from outwards, inwards, the bottom of your crust. Brush it really well and place it for another five minutes in a hot oven until the glazing dries out. One more important tip, make sure to keep them in open air until they are totally cool. Otherwise your tart shells or short crust pastry will get soggy as they will sweat. You can perfectly make this in advance. You can even do the fonçage technique or the pie sinking and place them in the freezer for up to three days until you need them, then go ahead and bake them. In the next videos, I'm going to be sharing with you different recipes on how to make different fillings and we're going to be using these very same tart shells we made together. I hope you found this video very useful. I'm going to be giving you more tips in the next videos as we will be making more recipes using these tart shells. I thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get all the recipes. If you make this recipe, please let me know how it turned out. I'm always happy to read from you and see you soon in the next video. Happy baking!